Got to keep it steady. So what's up everybody? Of course it's me, Troy. I'm back in another video. I think this is like the fourth video I didn't film. Anyway, girl, put this hat on, honey, because it's, it's about, I'm finna, child, I'm finna lay down some well. <laughs> okay, y'all, listen, I just want to connect with you guys about what I've been reading or what I've read in the first week of April, and hopefully I, I keep going down from there. So the first book that I read, and I don't feel like pulling these off my shelf, so I'll put a, a thingy somewhere, a, accoutrement, I'll put an accoutrement somewhere. <laughs> the first book I read was uh, The Bean Trees by Barbara Kingsover. Love that book. Love it, chicken papas. It was a very good book. Uh, now, the, the main thing that I want to say about that book that I found that I enjoyed the most was the fact that I loved the writing. The writing was so, it had this whole charming quality to it. And, you know, this is probably like off base for me because, you know, I say anything. But it kind of made me think of, or it kind of felt sort of like this really elongated southern limerick how it read. But um, nonetheless, the story is about a woman named Taylor. And that is not her government name because she decides to change her name. But it is about a woman named Taylor who decides to move from her small town in Kentucky to go across the, the across you know the nation to land up in I think it was to Arizona I believe it was I, I have to get the book to be 100% sure of that accuracy that I need for this video. Nonetheless, along her journey, well, the reason she left Kentucky was because she did not want to end up being sort of like the barefoot and pregnant girl that was pretty much populating her entire small town. Like, every girl in high school was becoming barefoot and pregnant, and she knew that that was not going to be her destiny. She knew that that she was going to, you know, go away from this Kentucky town so, so that she could afford choices. Um in life choices and roads in life but it nonetheless upon her leaving her small town she stops at a bar where you know fortunately for her and unfortunately for her at the same time she is given a small native american girl to take care of to adopt and take care of um under some very shady kind of dealings nonetheless i should say but with that being said, Taylor does find herself, you know, in the position of being this sort of foster mother and, you know, here it is, this Native American girl who's very much mute. She finds herself having to take care of, you know, despite the fact that she left her town in Kentucky to get away from, you know, becoming a mother at such an early age. Now, while Taylor's story is very much told in the first person narrative, there's a second story that is told in the third person narrative, and that is of a woman named Lou Ann. Now, at the beginning of the novel, Lou Ann is pregnant with her first child. Um, she is a married woman. Sorry, excuse me. I'm trying to get that stuff up. She is married with her first child, and her husband is very much inattentive to her you know in, the, in their relationship he spends a lot of his time outside of the home and just you know girl just giving her all kinds of like slow burning hell but despite all that um Luann does have her child and you know given the fact that her husband has pretty much disappeared from her to go find his identity somewhere else I don't know what the hell that man was doing she ends up opening up her doors to you know through some circumstances I won't give her away but she ends up opening up her doors to Taylor so these two come together to sort of to make this sort of blended family and that is kind of where the crooks of the bean trees arise and there's a lot of different themes that goes on in this book um they talk about you know King's over talk about you know family friendship loyalty uh that sort of thing and then branching from that she talks about you know immigration uh, native american uh you know history as well as you know their treatment and given the time frame this book was taking place which i, I want to say it was from the late 70s to early 80s um but yeah it's just a slew of different things that goes on in this book very charming like i said read very easy read because it was one that I just once I was into the writing I was just like absorbed by it um the only flaw I will say and this is just coming from someone who you know I love uh conclusions I'm not really a, so I mean I'm not really a fan of the opening and kind of ending but the only kind of flaw I will say that I found was the fact that we never as a reader we never got any further information regarding you know who this Native American girl was uh, in her previous life before Taylor adopted her so I was hoping that we would get that as well but the good news is that I bought this box set where it's like four Barbara Kings over it's actually right here all the way up there anyway it has four of her novels 
With that being said, this second book, because there's a second book called Pigs in Heaven, I think it was. <laughs> but anyway, Pigs in Heaven is the second book within this whole series. And I am hoping that that'll give us more answers regarding this book. So that is my kind of sort of kind of final thoughts, a kind of sort of side of suit, of suit, of suit, of side of thoughts on the bean trees. I do recommend that book. And you know, I hate using the word recommend, girl. I don't recommend nothing because I just go with my own interests. Go ahead and check that book out if you ever have time. And I'll see you guys later. And if you have read the bean trees and you love Barbara King's open and please drop me a comment down below and this is Troy signing out